Okay, everybody. Uh, good morning. I've just been watching the number of people joining and I, we've reached a number where I think it would be good to start. Um, just before we um, commence, um, and I just want to say a few words, just in terms of admin, um, the session is being recorded. So if you do miss anything or you want to review it, then you're able, we will be able to share it with you afterwards. And also in terms of um, Peter's presentation later on, if there are any questions, um, there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your screens. Um, if you go into that and up put all your questions on online and then we'll pick them all up at the end um, so that um, we can gather everything we need in one place for the end of the presentation and there will be time for that. So um, good morning and a warm welcome for me um, and a huge thank you as chair of the Places Board for giving up your time uh, and, and wanting to help us tell the Lowestoft story. It's a story that's um, certainly um, a marathon and not a sprint, but that said, staying with the marathon par parlance, we do want a fairly um, fast start, I think. So, and we also want you all to tell the story at home, at work, and when meeting people. So today, Peter will take you through the branding and the tools to use it. Uh, and just to say that, it's not a, a logo fest, but the logo does obviously have a role to play. Um, our aim um, is to explain to you as people who deliver and commission work, how the low stuff story can be used uh, to drive all that we do in the town and our ambitions. Um, you'll see um, examples um, of other areas and how they've used similar techniques. So our aim is that hopefully it will make you think and at the end it will enable you to use the branding well. And the last thing that I want to say is that this is not just the role of the local authority, it's all of our jobs to promote and develop the town working together um, and ensuring that all the ambitions that we have are delivered. So once again, a huge thank you from me for spending your time this morning to um, attend. Um, I hope you enjoy it. And once again, many, many, many thanks. So over to you, John. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, anyway, good morning, everyone. Um, privilege to be with you all in Lowestoft or wherever you are. Um, it's been a fantastic um, piece of work that we've been involved with and been, as I say, a privilege to work with you all um, on what's been a really great journey. Um, thinking Place work with places across the uh, UK and have done for the last 14 years. We help them kind of reimagine themselves by creating that forward looking story of place that as Stephen said, everybody can tell and that's really important at the moment um, if we look at a situation that we're all in as we will look to recover and reset after coronavirus there are some very important principles the first thing is to have that clear direction of travel that clear story that as has been said it's not the council's story it's the place's story the other thing that's key is to widen the leadership of place. And we've seen that with the place board and the role that Stephen has played within that and lots of others. It's critical to have active collaboration. When coronavirus hit, everyone collaborated in the crisis. We now need to see that same level of collaboration as we look to recover. People have to come together behind the place. And finally, the importance of that story is for you to make the most of your assets and you've got plenty of them. And that story needs telling or needs to highlight those assets that aren't going to be big investments coming from government or elsewhere. So we all have to make the most of what we've got. So what I want to do in this session um, before Peter comes in, is just to touch on where we got to with the story. Because the story drives everything in terms of how we communicate. We're either using the words from it or we're using the visuals that have been driven from it. But the story is at the heart of everything. And when we did um, the piece of work 
Um, and we consulted with a huge amount of stakeholders. Um, out of that engagement, various things were critically clear. You know, first of all, Lowestoft is a place that's been built around water, the water of the sea, but the water of the broads and et cetera. And like a lot of places, um, when you've got something like that as an asset, it's easy to forget it. It's easy to turn your back on it. And it's so important to have. And there is the isolation. You know, people talk about lots of peripherality and et cetera. But there is also something splendid and attractive in that isolation. We've touched on the need for organisations and people to come together. And I just urge that the more of that, the better. And you've got two big Bs there, the beach and the broads, two massive selling points. And where else has those next to each other, a national park and a beach that close? To make the most of all of this, though, you've got to think bigger. You've got to think wider about the assets and what you've got. And you've got to play to that, those different audiences, those investors that are outside. The future success of Lower Stuff will not be built by the audience within the place. It will be built by decisions made outside it. And therefore, to get that story across, you've got to join up the assets and make sure that you really commit uh, to telling that exciting story of place and communicating the unique sense of place that Lowestoft has. And one of the big bits, of course, is being the most easterly point. And we'll kind of come back to that. So the story is made up of themes, really, sort of, which are like pillars of the story, chapters of the story, if you will. And, and these themes are what we are suggesting the place needs to focus on to change its image and help drive transformation. We're not suggesting that they're fully in place. What we're saying is they are critically important and need your focus. The other thing that the themes and the big idea are not is they're not strap lines. They're not bits of marketing. They're thinking, they're strategy. If you like, they're the engine within the car that drives everything, but they're not what you see on the outside. So if we start with the first one and the evidence that kind of supports that, and as we've talked about, water has always been critical, you know, the sea, et cetera, and water has forged what you are and will be forging your future. It has been about fishing. It has been about oil and all sorts of things like that. It is now about renewables. So when you look, and it's really fascinating, at your business base, a lot of your business base is out at sea. You can't easily see it. It's not on the land. And so bringing that story to life is really important. So being proud of your heritage in relation to water is critical, but being able to, as a continuum, look at how it's going to develop the place going forward is equally important. The other thing is, is about celebrating the sea, celebrating water, celebrating the stories that have made your place. Don't turn your back on it. It's a fabulous thing to have. And we've talked about that theme as harnessing and celebrating the energy of the sea. And that is everything from the enjoyment element, the beach element, the seafront element, all the way to the hard-edged business element of it that we see with renewables. The second aspect and the second theme is something about this isolation, this wonderful space that you have, this combination, as I say, of broads and beach, the coastline, the sand dunes. It really is a very, very special environment that you want to cherish. And of course, with it comes first light, with it comes the east. But as I say, in terms of an experience, it is so special and people enjoy it so much and it needs communicating so that it attracts more people. And we've talked about that as explore, 
the East Gate because there's a great discovery opportunity for people there. Whatever they enjoy about the coast, and we know people love the coast, well, it's quite a bit different when you get to lower stock. Sitting above those two themes is a big idea. And the big idea is a bit more um, a statement of intent. It's a bit more emotional, etc. And we've talked about this as Lowestoft, the leading light. And what do we mean by the leading light? Well, first of all, this is about thinking about being first. You know, you are the first for so many things from the first cup of coffee that would be drunk in the day to whatever. And that being first has to be a metaphor for what you do. It has to be about confidence. It has to be about aspiration. It has to be about doing things differently. And that bit about being on the edge could be a good thing. You know, you should celebrate all of that. It's fantastic because it's something you've got that others haven't. And it's when you bring together those different aspects of landscape, the business opportunity, and the positioning of the place with that newfound confidence that you really have a very exciting story to tell, which brings together big idea and themes into a story that looks like this. And this is about your differentiation, it's about your competitiveness, and it's what we intend to tell. And most importantly, as Stephen has pointed out, you've got to tell this story. Right? And part of today is about showing you the tools that we're going to give you to help you tell this story. But please, please, please don't sit back and leave it to somebody else. It needs you to take ownership for helping drive low stuff forward. So at that point, I've sort of articulated the story that sits behind it. I'll now pass on to my fellow director, Peter Anderson, and Peter's going to take you through how we actually bring that to life. Just sharing, just doing the technical aspect of sharing screen. Fly from the start. Hi. My name is Peter Anderson. I'm creative director from Thinking Place. I'm also director of the Peter Anderson studio. So in terms of what we do, as John said, um, with Place for over 14 years, we have worked with all sorts. We've worked with development, we've worked with villages, we've worked with towns, we've worked with cities, we've worked with counties, we've even worked with countries. Um, so we've got a lot of experience helping places articulate what's special and what makes them different from other places and therefore enables them to compete on various levels. With my other cap on, as director of Peter Anderson's studio, I, I work with Hollywood, I work with uh, major television from all around the world, helping bring to life stories, um, which is very, very, very similar to place. Um, when you understand your story and who your audience is, it's then about articulating that and bringing it to life. So the two very much overlap and feel very natural together. So I've got just a couple of examples of those to introduce you. Um, not that I'm biased and nothing to do with my accent, but obviously one of my favourites being Northern Ireland and the complexity of communications uh, from television adverts to radio to signage to um, uh, uh, paths and I mean I guess it, it, it goes on and on and on and on in terms of the amount of material that, that we produced with them all coming from their strategy um, to somewhere like Livingstone uh, um, with we're working with Zambia and one of the exciting things here that's happening I, I find just earlier in the week that we're in early production to create probably the biggest sculptural installation in Africa. So that's in a process and that's come out of the destination management plan that we did with Livingstone. Um, to cities like Lancaster, and again, from their events to a multitude of material that they've produced, all about bringing their story to life. And part of that is about bringing the people together, which you can see on the top 
left-hand slide. Uh, to, to towns like Malden, you know, and, and again, once you have the story, there's also things that can change things like the environment. So here you can see a couple of quick wins from something as simple as bunting to something that's more complex. Uh, you can see on the right hand side in the terms of their signage. But again, it's unique to their story and it's about modernizing and making them special. To something that's uh, a bit more fun. This is working with the National Trust and this is using oral history um, to help bring communities together and capture what's happened in a place uh, um, so they will have that for a long time going forward. Uh, to then moving into things like film and television. So, so Mandela, you know, a very simple example uh, here in Hollywood, but I guess it's, it's, it's about why I'm showing these and what they mean. So these are two films. One is The Hustle, which is a Hollywood film, and very much mainstream. So it has a particular look and feel. And then in contrast to that, you've got Human Flow which is an art film uh, about people's right to move around the world. And it's targeted in a very, very different way um, to a multitude of, of, of shows, you know, from EastEnders to Dr. Foster to Sherlock to Casualty. I mean, the list goes on. I think the important thing here is, is, is when you understand the story, you need to know who's watching that, what the age group is, what the target market is, what's relevant to that story, and therefore how you bring that to life. Um, it's crucially important. Um, so, you know, when you're dealing with a period drama, that period drama has a very, very different look and feel to uh, a modern show like Sherlock. And again, when I'm talking about bringing it to life, it's not simply the brand or the logo, that's part of it. It's the animated title sequence, it's, it's the intro graphics, um, and we were part of the team who, I guess, created this new language, which has been copied so much since um, it's hard to see. Um, so when it comes to telling the lowest off story, the first thing we've got to think about is photography. Um, so just as a, a, this, this is the world we live in. So please forgive me, there's somebody continuously knocking on my front door. So I, I better answer to stop the knocking but please bear with me. Oh. Problem solved. This is, this is a modern problem that only exists in current times. I, I, had, uh, I gave a lecture in the National Film School on Friday and, and I had four deliveries. So, so, that we've, we've, so far we've been quite lucky. So going back to when it comes to photography, again, this is not just about photographing your assets. This is your primary communication tool. So you've got to understand, when you understand your story, then, then it's about, well, how does it influence everything we do? Um, so here you've got a very simple example. You've got Holy Island. Something that was important to Holy Island as a place was its spiritualism, its, its Celtic roots. It had these sort of, it had this feeling of timelessness and this feeling that the land was bigger and more important than the people. So what that meant was when we photographed Holy Island, we not only animated the history to modernize it, but we photographed where we could into the sun. So you, you brought to life this spiritual element, this Celtic roots part of it. And again, when the opportunity was there, you would make the land quite literally bigger than the people, the biggest part of the story. So the people purposely small and the land purposely big. But each strategic story is different because each place is different. Coventry, on the other hand, words that were very important in its strategy were innovation, technology, enterprise and learning. So that meant, you did, again, you didn't just swan into the city center and take photographs. You thought, well, how do we bring that to life? How do we communicate this strategy? So, of course, you, you go to where the innovation is happening. You go and behind the scenes because a place isn't, isn't just the high street. The place is everybody who works there and all the businesses that belong there. So this is Jaguar Land Rover in one of their scientific testing rooms. 
again, this is Coventry University uh, showing some of the things that are going on there in terms of their innovation and research and development. So they become primary tools in expressing Coventry story. Uh, Aldershot, much simpler. This was about repositioning Aldershot from somewhere that was all about army and the military services to a new Aldershot where they put the family first. You know, the army was moving out. There was a new community moving in. And very simply, what you're doing is you're strategically showing that with your photography. This is an old army training camp that's been converted to a facility for the family, for the people. So you're taking those, you're taking the past and you're moving it forward with the new strategic story. And again, what this also means that when you're casting models, your models are the local community. They are family because strategically that's what's important. So when it comes to Lowestoft, the same principle applies. So when it comes to thinking about photography, you're, you're first and foremost, you're going, okay, well, so how are we going to illustrate and show this place as a leading light? Um, I mean, there's the obvious, um, and then there's the less obvious in terms of that notion of leading and what that means of being first, isn't just simply first light, it's first in some of the industry and the opportunity to be a place that is metaphorically representative of innovation by this notion of being first. You know, again, harnessing and celebrating the energy of the sea, that isn't just taking photographs of the sea, that's looking at renewable energy, that's looking at the technologies that are connecting to the sea and bringing those to life. And then of course, there's exploring the e-scale. You know, this is where the broads come in. This is where that whole, uh, I guess, more physical story and its multitude of, of uh, opportunities is there to be expressed. So these are some of the photographs that we've started to take. And again, I mean, you cannot escape your point of difference. It's something to celebrate. So that wonderful uh, um, skyline um, is absolutely something to celebrate. But, and you'll see it pops up, no matter, even if you're trying to avoid it, it's there, this wonderful horizon point, just, just, it's just there and it should be celebrated, whether you're looking at leisure or whether you're looking at business and your business assets. Um, and again, you know, going to harnessing the sea, this is, you know, these are some of the businesses that are making use of it and working at sea, but based in lower stuff. So you want to show off these people and you want to show off um, all your stakeholders who are doing fascinating things, because that's part of the reason why people will be interested in your place. Again, you know, it's, 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 showing the everyday work that goes on behind the scenes is crucially important. Everybody knows what the high street looks like, but, no, but most people don't get to see behind the scenes in your innovations that are going on on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, whether that be in marine business, whether that be arts and crafts, it's, 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 it's highlighting these ever, or whether that be purely combining these elements of leisure, you know, it's, it's, amazing place to go wind surfing or kite surfing as I've seen on many occasions there um, and what a beautiful place you know it's it's you can't get away from it I was taken on a walk from you know, simply one end to the other which I think took almost four hours but I was absolutely blown away by how surprisingly different different areas are and how many different activities were going on from things that were happening on the pier to more rugged areas um, of the coastline. And again, that multitude of, of innovative young businesses that, that are there should be absolutely celebrated, you know? And, 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 you know, a place has layers of complexity, you know, that are including uh, leisure, which, which in terms of the, the nighttime economy is not only for visitors, it's also for locals. And to industries old and industries new, um, it's and even to to the the high street, which you you you, you might recognise one of your residents there. Um, to to again that wonderful promenade, um, and and that, again how that can be used by both locals and visitors. Uh, 
to the big story that you have that's part of yours, which is the broads um, and what you can do there in terms of exploring, living, breathing space. Um, a lot of things that have become much more poignant and relevant now um, than perhaps that they were before. You know, the idea of, of, of having space has now become a massive plus, whereas before people were cramming to live on top of each other in, in cities like London, whereas now they're cramming to leave these places. So in business sense, they are looking for space now. Trends have certainly changed. And even just using London as an example alone, inner London places have dropped in value by 10%, where places out on the edge have gone up in value by 40% because people are vacating large cities. So one of your other tools is a visual language. So, so what is a visual language? Why do we have it? Why does a place have it? What use is it? Your, your primary tool will always be photography, but as many other supporting tools that you can have, the better in terms of telling your story. So a visual language is, is a way of telling your story. It's designed for stakeholders. And the reason why it's designed for stakeholders is because it's not a logo and it's not supposed to be a logo because in that case, you would have company logo with its branding and its colors and it's, and it's very well thought out communication strategy versus place logo. Whereas actually a place uh, should, it, it, a company is a place and a place um, has a multitude of companies. So there should be a blurring there. There should be, a company should be able to use a place's language and celebrate it without competing with it. So a visual language is something that can be used as a full on illustrative element, but it also can be used as an almost invisible watermark. So places can say, we're really proud to be stakeholders in this place and we want to champion uh, the place. And also in pragmatic terms, we want to recruit and we want our young people to stay here. So we want to celebrate our place for a number of reasons. So it allows for effectively a coercion and, 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 a, and a coming together without a competitive element. Um, so again, um, in terms of using a visual language, why is that used within an expression? And I guess it allows also for something to happen more than an identity can give you. Um, and this is just a very simple example that I've got, which is you know, one of the places we work with, uh, a market town called Chesterfield. Uh, and the reason why I've shown this example is because when you think of Chesterfield, almost like Paris and the Eiffel Tower, you think of the twisted spire. You can't get away from it. You type in Chesterfield and a lot of the stakeholders have used the twisted spire as their identity, as their logo. So therefore they're all kind of competing with each other. They're all sort of miscommunicating, but they're desperately proud of this unique feature, which is the twisted spire. So it doesn't make sense to go away from in the same way that your first light is your strongest story. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to move away from one of their strongest assets. But it, how do you think of that? How do you modernize that? Because in terms of that story, it was about a modern awakening. It was about taking this market time, giving it a good shake and looking forward, you know, and nurturing that, um, inventiveness and quirkiness that actually is um, described very well by the structure of the twisted spire. So if you're simply doing that and you're modernizing the twisted spire, an obvious way to do it, which you can see here is bring it into CG, bring it into 3D, make it a technological re-representation of this very important asset. But as you can see, it only goes so far when it's identity. It's quite simply the twisted spire. That's what it is. It's done in a modern way and it does that. But the minute you transfer and you push into a visual language, then you can use those ingredients, the ingredients of the past to move the place forward. So those elements, that architecture, the slats, the, the way that they're formed, becomes then a system, which is a metaphor for metamorphosis. So effectively, you're taking this language and the language itself is illustrating the strategy, which is helping move the place forward 
in its multitude of different ways uh, um, that can happen as technology changes and moves. Therefore, new inventive structures can be formed and new opportunities can be made. Also, an advantage is then this can be used within a place, whether it be on bus shelters, whether it be on signage, whether it be on hoardings, it becomes a tool which helps a place make a stamp that it is in a modern way engaged, engaged with its community, engaged with its stakeholders, looking forward, not simply looking back. Because any place that simply looks back will die, they'll starve. Um, the other advantage is in terms of dealing with stakeholders, you can see on the right hand side, you've got a business with its colors, uh, um, Knight Frank. You can see there's a, there's a logo fest going on on the left hand side, they're all competing with each other. You're not quite sure which one's in charge. You know that the, the development is the key bit of communication here. But then if you see, there's a very quiet watermark running through that. So the place is engaging with the developer, but it's doing it in a way where the developer is saying, I'm very, very proud to be part of this place, but it's not overtaking me. It's part of my story. Also, on the left hand side of the screen, you can see the place itself promoting itself using the language of the slats, using the language from the Twisted Spire, but as, as a metaphorical basis for showing modern expression. So in terms of the context for Lowestoff um, in, and its visual language, you know, it's very important to kind of go back to those themes and some of those war words that form those themes. You know, you can't get away from your point of difference in terms of first light and the east side but that is something that should be used to drive the ambition and the communications of being first you know that's a very powerful tool to have in terms of being able to stand out and be unique and that's something definitely not to shy away from so when you're thinking about c you know you're thinking about how do we connect C to new thinking, to being first? And how do we celebrate that? You know, it's, 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 and also other, other aspects that in terms of injecting that confidence and, and aspiration are also taking advantage of something that's quite unique in that sense that it's an incredibly beautiful space and it offers a multitude of experiences that mightn't have been as relevant to businesses in the past but are certainly relevant to businesses now. And again, this idea of being slightly isolated, where in the past, even dealing with tourism might have been a disadvantage. In our current times, that is a point of difference because that's exactly what people are looking for in this time. So it's something to kind of flex your muscle about now because you know, in this modern time, things have changed. So, Everything that I do, I mean, as part of, as creative director, I'm part of the team that creates that strategy. But that also means when it comes to illustrating and helping to bring that strategy to life, that, that connection is absolutely important. And understanding who that audience is and why we're doing it, who is it for. But as I say, so these themes are effectively should be used in everything that the place does moving forward, whether it be choosing bins, whether it be commissioning events, whether it be taking photographs, whether it be doing communication campaigns to promote the place, this should be the engine underneath the bodywork. And the bodywork can express itself in a multitude of ways. You know, it's, it's, the engine remains the same, but the opportunities for expression can change. So I've created a set of words called creative strategic direction words. And these are really just bridging words, just image based words, things to think about when expressing the place. You know, again, we come back to this notion of being first. Uh, we can't get away from and shouldn't get away from your beautiful seascape and your very unique horizon. But then there are other stories to be told there. There's your engineering story, there's your marine story, there's your big renewable energy story, you know, and it's taking all these things, but looking forward um, is very, very important. 
So the visual language, as I say, which is one of the many tools, is doing that. It's telling those stories. It's talking about first light. It's being very modern in its expression of doing that and on trend. And it's being very simple and bold in terms of expressing that. So whether it's looking directly at that story and where that can be harnessed, or whether it's looking at some of the other stories, like the renewable energy story, your engineering story, those behind the scenes story, it's all part of the same system. And then when it's applied and brought to life, it will be a combination of photography, elements of language, photography, uh, and they should all influence uh, what's being said. So you're, these are you know, imagery from the place itself. So whether it's on a business element or whether it's on a leisure element and whether it's about events, um, it's about having these tools that are open for anyone to use uh, um, to celebrate your place um, as are the photography. You know? And these are just some of the different ways. So you can see here um, um, a business perhaps using it as a way to, to use lowest off as something that it's proud of in terms of telling potential employees what's going on there, what it's like to work and live in this place, but also um, celebrating how beautiful it is and how, what an opportunity it is to be part of the place. Um, similarly, in terms of, of uh, um, East Coast College, again, you, you almost wouldn't even notice the visual language here, so it's applied so subtly. So again, it's about a tool to add to your story, not something to compete with it. So you have an identity and that identity um, is simply applied. So in terms of applying your thinking, um, you have to think, where will your story be visible? And where are the opportunities to tell that story? Um, we keep going back to the story. And again, the big purpose of this workshop is for you not to think about photographs or think about imagery, for you to think about this engine and where this engine is relevant to you as businesses uh, and commissioners, um, whether that be in the council, whether that be in colleges, whether that be in other places, where can you take this funnel of research that's been distilled into these things and then push it out the other side? So where, where can your expressions that are relevant to your individual stories come to life with this engine? So you should always be thinking, the engine is in the middle and that engine is your place story. How can our engine influence our environment? You know, whether that's signage, whether that's bins, whether that's benches, whether, how can it be unique? How can our place express itself in a way that's different from our competitors? Therefore, people will remember it. People will want to come with, to it. People will be photographed in it. You know, still to this day, I remember going to Chinatown in London when I was very young and, sending photographs of me in a Chinese style telephone box uh, um, in the days when there were telephone boxes. But again, that, that unique part of the environment, that man-made element of it was, as, was incredibly important in, in terms of me remembering where I was and that distinctive point of difference. Then you've got to think what products can we create, whether they be products to promote the place and the business within that, or whether they be products that come out of what makes the place special. And there's a multitude there. You know, I think, I think one of the products that you've already created, your First Light Festival, is a wonderful example of taking what's unique about your place and bringing it to life. Uh, then you've got to think about behaviors. You know, how, how are they different? You know, how should your behavior change with your new story? In terms of looking forward rather than looking back, what things should you do? What tone of voice should you have? Um, and then, of course, there's the obvious one, the one that people associate most with strategy, and that's your communications. And that's a multitude of communications, and those communications will change depending on who you're communicating to. You know, if you're communicating in an international trade fair, that's one thing. If you're communicating to government, that's another thing. Um, if you're communicating to visitor, that's another story altogether. And this is why having a strategic engine is so valuable to you, because you can do that in a multitude of different ways. Oh. Uh -oh. Aha. So 
I had a little bit of a technical moment there, but thankfully we survived. It's, it's like a microphone not working in a lecture room equivalent. So who's going to tell your story? So on one hand, your own community can tell your story. This still makes me well up in tears. You know, this is almost 14 years ago in Hull. And this was just a simple exercise with a group of school kids saying to them at the beginning of the workshop, how many of you do you think will stay in Hull when you leave school? Most of the, 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 the school kids didn't put their hands up. Then there was a simple exercise of telling them their brand story telling them what was unique about their place, showing them photographs from their place. And then that simple question was asked again, how many of you school kids are potentially going to stay in Hull? Three quarters of the room put their hands up. That's how powerful a very simple exercise can be in terms of bringing together your community and, and reminding people what they don't see because they live in it every day, what's special about it. You can also be more playful. This was a, a TV show um, which started off as the Castleford Project for Channel 4. And this was a very simple, fun exercise, which was asking all the local people what, what was special about their place, what they would like to see change in their place. And then we went in overnight and quite simply in words, communicated with the place and the individual words and stories and thoughts that were that, that were said by the local community were then plastered all around the time in this installation that, that was then filmed by Channel 4 um, as, a, as, a, as an instigator or, or the seed for a new story um, and it had a wonderful effect and it was simply photocopy on paper. Then there's other ways of doing that. This has just happened and it's actually still live in New Haven which is another sea bearing place like yourselves, which is why I put this example in. They took their place photography um, and they literally celebrated the talent of their place within their place, in their own bus shelters. So they used the place assets to actually inject a bit of pride in their professional community. And why not? You know, people driving past, people going to other places will feel differently about their place because the place is pride of its stakeholders. Um, so again, you know, when you when you take a place like Coventry, um, we've talked about its innovation, we've talked about its relation to technology and learning, um, its connections with peace and reconciliation, and it being an event central, you know. So again, its themes were fundamental in driving change, moving forward in its place. But, you know, the people themselves, the stakeholders themselves, and this is what's so important about today and so important about your launch, it's, it's you guys that will make your place special. It's you guys, by getting together, will get money from government. It's you guys that can share talent and resources, whether that be managers, whether that be um, uh, techniques, uh, whether that be just promoting your place together. So, again, this was Jaguar Land Rover. Um, this event was hosted by them. The storybook was paid by them because they were really proud of their place. Um, and you can see a lot of people in that city were proud of the city and its story. Um, so much so that they took their events and then they took their opportunity to London. So this was an event in the Shard where quite shamelessly, they were selling their city to potential investors in London. You know, they took their story to other places to say, come and invest in us. Bring your new businesses to our city. Bring your opportunities to our place. So that's effectively about them being ambitious and creating events, which were um, one of their themes, in other places. But there's lots of ways of doing that. So combining their event central with their peace and reconciliation story, they created a, an enormous event, one of the biggest in the world, about peace and reconciliation. So they put themselves on the map as the center of the world, or one of the centers of the world for peace and reconciliation. And they got some pretty big hitters, uh, which you can see there in some of the photographs, to come and host that event. Um, 
but also on a more localized level in one of the stakeholders meetings you know somebody complained about the ring road that went around the edges of coventry that being a problem somebody else went well you know i'm you know coventry's had a big heritage of cars we're obviously we are moving forward with self-drive cars and technology that nobody has done before. But we also, we have a proud heritage of where we're from. Why don't we use this negative thing called the Ring Road and have a car festival where all everyone can come, look at all these different cars throughout history. And this was literally a conversation between two meeting, two people in a champions meeting and the person from the council was there. So they all just got together and made this happen. So it doesn't necessarily have to be hundreds of thousands of pounds. It could be something whereby people in a room getting together and saying, how can we take our strategic story and keep bringing it to life, keep illustrating it in the multitude of different ways? And of course, we all know by them getting together, they got one of the big hitters, you know, they, they, they won UK City of Culture for 2021. How fantastic is that? And again, that's not the story. The story is one of the elements that help bind the people together to therefore motivate themselves to get new opportunities for the place. So the two work together very, very well. And you think of another example. Again, you know, if you think of your um, relationship to the broads, and then if you think of the South Downs National Park, you know, this is a complex place because it's a multitude of different places. Um, different local authorities, different councils. It's over 200 square miles of, of unique, but also uh, varying um, landscapes. Uh, we were very privileged to win the best place brand in the world for this in the International Place Branding Awards. Uh, so we're very proud of dealing with something that's quite complex and a set of complex things and helping bring that to life in a multitude of ways. And again, when I'm showing you these examples, you should be thinking, okay, look at these examples, but how can we use them? What's relevant to us? What can we use? What products, what communications, what behaviors? How can we change our environment with our story? Oh, this is what they use. This is how they brought theirs to life. But how can we bring lower stock to life? Because that's what's important here. So their visual language is taking their rolling hills, but taking all the layers from the chalk basin that then creates a unique type of topology, which then creates a unique type of nature, which then arguably creates a new type of, a unique type of wildlife. And again, they have a butterfly that, only, that exists there and nowhere else in the world, but then to unique literature and storytelling. That's a, a result from all these factors. So when you get this, these ingredients again, Photography will always come first, but you have a visual language which can be used to help create a unique story, whether that be in the visitor center, whether that be in your local newspaper, whether that be in, in their uh, sculptural signage, which in their case was incredibly important because it was defining a space. But doing that in a way where how you create that is as important. So this is sustainable wood that comes from the, the South Downs itself. And it's telling a story in a sustainable way, but doing it with confidence and modernity. But also you can take this visual language and you can simplify it. You can simply carve it on your signage. So for almost no money, you can have a unique expression and roll it out in a multitude of different ways. So whether that be um, in an in interior, whether that be in an exterior, whether that be used for something simple or whether that be used for something more complex, it's there as a tool. So you've got a stakeholder here, so proud of being part of the, Nas the South Downs National Park that they've created a, a, a specific new beer. And again, it hasn't interfered with their branding, but you can see the visual language there on the label as something that says our beer exists because we're so proud of our place and what makes our place unique to, uh, to something simply like off the shelf um, signage, finger point signage with a unique mark on it suddenly becomes something that's a bit more special and a bit more unique to place. But again, on everything, they've got it on vehicles, they've got it on uniforms, 
they've got it in their communications and they've got it in their advertising campaigns. And again, what's very important here is, is they're asking the local population to get a fresh perspective. They're asking them to use public transport, to get out of their cars, to actually think like a national park, to be human by nature, which again is one of the themes. So they're simply bringing that to life in, in, in this way. But then also equally important when it came to their website, um, what was interesting here is people get really excited about technology when it comes to things like websites and what they can do. It can tell the weather, it can show events, it can do these multitude of things. But actually when we did a workshop with them, we didn't think about the visuals, we thought purely about the strategic engine because that's the thing that's important. And what was one of the primary things of importance to them were to unite these 200 square miles of quite different geography. So what that meant was the first thing they had to think about when they were creating their website was that's our first page, that's our first point of communication, is that we're uniting the national park. So when you arrive, you're seeing these multitude of experiences, but that's being told to you that is one place, one important place. Again, the list of things from bags to maps to library cards, you know, where you can express yourself is limited by your own imaginations. Um, and a wonderful thing is then working with partners. So as we know, the National Trust are pretty tough when it comes to their brand and they're generally not very good at sharing. They are the National Trust. Some people would even argue that they actually are a place and a country of their own that has an accumulation of little islands around the place. But no, they actually want to engage. They want to create unique experiences with a place. But of course, a visual language and the tools that you now have will help with those collaborations. So you can see here with their city mill, uh, which, which is within the South Downs, they have shared branding, you know, and you can see that their display on the right is a kind of metal sculpture that comes directly from the branding. And they're using that because they want to be unique to place as much as any other organization does, but they simply need the tools to help them do that. And you now have those tools. So the, 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 it carries on, it doesn't stop. So, so last year they were granted uh, dark sky status. So they created, they had a new story and their branding metamorphosized to put that new story first. It was still housed in a way that allowed continuity and will continue to allow continuity, you, you know, and, and that will continue to move forward. So ambition is something that doesn't really matter about size. It's about people in a place getting together. North Knots is a, is a wonderful example of this. It's a tiny little place north of Nottingham. Um, and these guys had ambition. They got together and they're, they're getting stuff done. You know, they're, they're, they're so in a, in a sense, their, their visual language was very much about celebrating their space and their rural assets. And when it came to an expression with them, designing around this story was incredibly important. Taking photography around this generous element, this breathable element of their story is important. They also created simple quick wins like unique bunting. They did other things like they took over um, all the billboard signage around their airport to kind of remind people uh, uh, um, that this place is somewhere that has space to breathe. But then they were very ambitious about other things. How can we engage our community with our stories? But also, how can we bring our countryside into our town centres? Because this is a very practical way of changing their environment. So this is an example about having allotments in, in the village centres that have their unique stories on them. But also there's other ways of doing that. So one of their stories that they can claim that was very important, and again, this comes from the Storyville, um, Storyscape element of, of, of their story is Robin Hood. You know, that's a unique story, but you don't want to tell that story in a, in a, in a way where you're looking backwards. You want to look forwards. So their finger post is unique to place, and is telling that Robin Hood story. You know, the finger posts are arrows shot through a modern, confident, simple tree. But also 
because it's a multitude of small places. Sorry, I've got another delivery back again. This is only two, it was four last time. So, so that is quite literally a unique story that's creating a unique environment that comes from their strategy. Uh, what was important to these places, the individual towns in North Knots, is that even within their story of getting together and claiming the assets and the elements that were unique and, and the wider stories like uh, Robin Hood, they also wanted to maintain their own uniqueness. So each town within North Knots had a different colour. So whether they were painting their bus station, whether they were renewing some of the elements that were there in terms of old signage, in terms of bins, in terms of other factors, it's they simply, they, they can express themselves in a unique way as well. So whether you're taking something simple like their, their, their signage for, for car parks, by having a visual language and having a unique color system, you can do that. Um, and being more playful with their stories. This is in, in, in one of their train stations. The lovely thing about the train station here, and this goes back to the stakeholders, is the people reclaimed it. The historic society were very, very keen on what happened with their train station at Retford, um, but, but they didn't have any money. Interestingly, by having a story and by having assets, photography and, and visual language, they, they had stuff that they could use for free. So what happened here was Retford train station was effectively brought up to date and decorated with new stories with their assets. But the lovely thing here is it was paid for by Virgin Real because again, like, like na the National Trust, the place itself didn't have to find the money. It had to find partners who, who could see the benefit in collaborating with the place and who were proud of the place and would invest in the place. And in this case, it was Virgin Real. Uh, so one of the other and probably more important things that came out of the Storyscape theme were their Pilgrim, their, their Pilgrim father story, that being a big part of their heritage. From one of the themes, this created this notion that actually this is maybe more important than we thought it was. We should do something with this. And the council and the local stakeholders got together and they created a museum. So they created an asset for the place that didn't exist before the strategy exists. So this is again, a wonderful um, example of a small place doing big things because it's got ambition, not necessarily money, ambition. So you've also got here, uh, rather than having uh, signage, you've got uh, sculptural signage. You've got something that's way more ambitious in terms of um, a way to signpost the place. So their notion here is to create a rural sculpture, which is the signpost to their place, which is bigger and more ambitious than the Angel of the North to put themselves on the map. So they're in the process of doing this. But not only that, on a very practical level, they all got together and they're the, the first rural place in Britain to win a bid, which effectively means millions of plines given to the place. So when it comes to lower staff, you've got to think, how can we take these assets? How can we take these tools um, and bring them to life? Um, you know, this is one of the assets that's provided to everybody. I've simply got a couple of pages from this asset. I've got another couple of pages from uh, uh, the storybook to show you but this is more technical, you know. So your toolkit will, will show you your story and remind you of that story. So if you're commissioning or you're thinking about things, it will remind you of, of these unique pointers, but also it will introduce you to your visual language, what it looks like, what those assets are, how you can use them, where you can use them uh, in terms of what's relevant, uh, introduce you to your identity, you know, where to use it, where not to use it, how to use it, your typography, um, and different aspects of your story, including things like your color palette, you know, 
where your brighter colors might be used for events and festivals, your more muted colors might be used for your environment. So it's taking these elements and knowing where and how to use them, depending on your story. Again, you will have a photography creative direction. What talks about uh, when commissioning new photographs, things to think about, you know, think about that incredibly unique horizon line that you have and that expression of first light and where that props up and actually celebrating that as long as the other elements that need to be told from leisure to shopping to industry, both past and present. Uh, and this comes together in, in one of your first exemplars, which is your storybook. And your storybook, quite simply, is for you, the stakeholders, to, in a more accessible way, remind you of what's special about your place, to show other people, but also remind you of how you can then express yourself using these tools. So the storybook will, quite literally, in an accessible way, talk about what's unique about Lowestoft and what, how it can use this unique to, uh, qualities to push itself forward in terms of competing against other places and driving the, its economy and the opportunities that come with that, whether they be local opportunities, whether they be visitor opportunities, whether they be business opportunities, it's using these to effectively be a leading light be somewhere that is first and that is unique in all the different ways it can do it, not simply from um, that story, but how that story can transform into other stories, like your renewable energies and your wind farms and your other aspects of this, but equally importantly to your small local businesses and stakeholders and how you can support local and uniqueness that comes with that, because that in itself will drive opportunity. So that takes us to the part of, of, of the talk where really we wanna be thinking about your strategy, your story and what you guys can do. So we go back to the single most important part of this workshop, which are these sets of words. And in a way, really what's important here is asking yourself and, and asking us because you've got us here, how can we bring our story to life? I mean, some of it is just there and you're doing it. Some of it hasn't happened yet. Some of it is an opportunity and some of it, it is literally about putting that signpost up that celebrates what's, what's, what's obvious to some people, but invisible to others. So, okay. Thank you, Peter. Um, really, really great. And a lot of insight there, which hopefully is helpful. So you've um, now got the ability, you've got, my, you've got myself, you've got Peter, and you've also got Karen Staples. And Karen um, has led on this project um, for the council. So you've got us now to, in terms of, of, of asking questions and et cetera, and hopefully giving, um, a bit more help in terms of what you can do with this. So I guess, um, well, I'm going to start anyway, because I've got the prerogative to do that by asking Karen some difficult questions. The, um, so I guess the, the first bit, Karen, will be is, is why, why has the place done this? And what, what for you as sort of the, as the catalyst for it all happening, what, what does success look like? Um, hi, thanks, John, and thanks everybody for um, taking part um, today. It's great to see so many people um, joining the event. Um, for us, it, it, it's very much part of um, the work that um, Eastford Council has been doing in respect of um, our regeneration projects across the town uh, and um, started um, quite a while ago when we were doing our Making Waves Together project um, that, that was looking at, um, you know, the, the story that we tell about ourselves and, 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 and what we see as the place and really that acknowledgement that um, that within the place we, we don't really push out those positive stories both internally and externally to stakeholders that we want to reach and from a region perspective that's about increasing visitor numbers and getting more people um, to come to Lowestoft um, to, to visit and um, to live to work and invest. Um, 
Also, um, we are looking at some significant um, public sector funding for um, trying to get um, our, our, the ambitions that we have around regenerating the town um, to come forward. So, um, as some people will be aware, we have um, submitted um, a town's fund deal and created a new Lowestoft investment plan um, to try and um, get uh, public sector funding into the place. And the investment plan and the placemaking are very much um, part of, 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 that, of, of, of that toolkit. Um, so that's really um, sort of where our ambitions lie. Um, and I think it's also, you know, that, the, the, you know, we know it's there's so much to celebrate in this place and, and we're, we're not making as much of it as we can do um, success for for us i think would be to just see more positive messages coming from um from um stakeholders within lower staff more people shouting about the 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 the, the good things acknowledging that there's always bad things and then we can always do better because because we know that but um it's really having a, a joined up vision and 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 and, and aspiration as a, as a community um and i think the place making the work we've been doing on place making um to date has been a really good way of involving the community in those um regen projects because we know that you know whatever ever physical infrastructure takes place um in a place um you know, the, the community need to be engaged with that and feel part of that so hopefully um the place making and work we're doing will it will encourage that community engagement thanks Karen. um keep whacking in the questions some really good ones coming in um peter um a question about how how within the brand do you balance what is clearly a heritage history offer and obviously that's a strong bit against being forward looking i think that's just about a time and a place again like with all communications there's a time to focus on heritage and there's a time to focus on modernity you know with innovation you know you're certainly focusing on modernity when it comes to business and when it comes to inward investment and um, one of your stories within uh, tourism might be looking at that history and heritage, but also even within that, there's still a modern story because everybody wants to stay in a modern guest house or a modern hotel. So there's always a crossover between the two. I think it's just about being relevant to the individual stories. Okay. And um, another one for you. Um, it, we're in a virtual world now. How has the virtual world, which is clearly going to continue one way or another for a while, how is that affecting how this can be implemented? I think first and foremost, the world has changed. It's, it's changed. There's some really horrible and terrible things that have happened in this last year. Uh, but there's also been a, a, a chance that the world has stopped and, and there's a renewable element to it. But also I think there's a way where we think differently and the digital world helps us think differently. You know, here we all are um, doing meetings, whereas before if I'd given a presentation, you know, my biggest worry would, does the microphone work? You know, can I get to in the door through the security? And now I'm worried about, as you've seen, our delivery is going to come. You know, is somebody going to tap on the window? It, this has forced us to become much more casual, I think, as a, very, 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 very quickly. But I also think it's also given places, particularly places that are more isolated, a massive opportunity, whether that be in tourism or whether that be in business, because this virtual world that we're living in mean we don't all have to be located in the centre of a city we can work. I mean, my, my team are all over the place. Some of my team have moved back home to Wales, moved back to different places because you can work from anywhere. But what that means from a place is you can have it all. You can live by the sea you can, uh, and you can have the life by the sea, but work in a high tech industry. So I think it's an incredible opportunity for Lowestoft, the time that we're in. And I think that technology is a big part of that 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 and I think it's about using that in the right way and actually using it right now kind of strike and and make use of the fact that people are now evacuating cities and looking for new places to live and work cool um Karen uh, is the imagery and all of the brand available now and are there any restrictions on its use 
Um, yeah, thanks for that question, um, which is a common one coming through. Um, yes, um, absolutely, the imagery and branding is available now. Um, we're, what we'll be um, doing is we'll be asking um, anybody who wants to use the imagery and the branding toolkit to, to email us at our economic regen email address, which we'll send out to all participants um, after the event's over. Um, that's economicregen at eastsuffolk.gov.uk. Um, the reason we're asking that you email um, us is just so that we can uh, make a record of who, who is using it. Um, we will then send you a link to uh, a, a Google Drive link, which will enable you to, to access it. It's very much open to everybody. Um, just obviously we'd ask that you, you use it as per the the um, guidance in today's video and as per the branding document guidance and um, if anybody um, is wanting any support as to how to use it um, also just contact that email address and, and we can have that conversation um, with you. Um, we'll also be sending an email out today with the link to this um, um, video on YouTube so that it can be watched again um, and we I, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun a bit here, John, but I'll go anyway. Um, we've also created a storybook, um, which um, sort of helps to um, pull all of that that, um, that work together. And that storybook will be available on our on our website. Okay, that's great. Um, who who are the audiences that we're aiming at with this, Karen? Um, the audience is as, as basically anyone in lowest of two who wants to push out those positive messages and promote um, their businesses and organisations um, within lowest of. So um, um, I noticed a question from Alice um, Taylor here, you know, saying about how can we bring small retail in this? And um, yeah, absolutely. Um, small retail um, businesses, um, we want to be promoting these these messages too and, and understand how they can use the branding. and. Um, we will be doing that through our um, we can do that through our um, existing region um, projects. So we have a lot of contact with small retail through our two heritage action zones, our one in the north of Lowestoft and our one in the south. And we're doing a lot of our sort of campaigns with small retail um, through through those projects and through social media. Um, but it's also um, for big businesses as well. So we you know we have some key um, businesses in with Lowestoft who have asked to to use the branding for their and um, planning and design work and and to you know to help. Explore Explain how they're um, placed in in lower stuff. So a lot of our offshore sector businesses have been in contact asking to use it. So you know it's it's a small as big as small as big as you are. There's an opportunity to use that branding within within your own within your own branding and promotion. Okay, um, Peter, how 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 do you see this working alongside you know a strong brand in the place like the councils? Well, it's. I think that the, the council council's branding is 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 for services, and and that should remain that way. So it's a very different thing. I think the, this is this is branding is for the place and all the stakeholders in the place, which include the council. So it's about where this is used, and this is used to celebrate Lowestoft and tell Lowestoft story this isn't used as a backdrop for the bin collection or something like that and those boundaries would never cross over but it might be used where if if the council were creating an event and they're celebrating the place or it might be used by the council if they were going to mip an international trade fair to promote um lowest off um as a region or as a place to go um, one of the things that you kind of touched on um, throughout um, the examples in the presentation was public realm. I mean, what what opportunities do you see for Lowestoft in terms of its public realm, in terms of how this could influence that? I think Lowestoft has, you know, it has many unique and wonderful stories, but it's got one big hitter that you can't get away from. And that big hitter is massively appealing. You know, the, the place that reflects, receives the first light in Britain. And straight off, I'd be thinking, right, what can we do in the environment that celebrates that story? You know, at the minute, there's a plaque that's on a rock. What else can you do? You know, how can you make it something that you want to go and visit? If you think historically, uh, the railway companies created piers uh, uh, um, 
to make people go to the seaside at the weekend. You know, this was what what can Lowestoft do to make its unique story in its environment create unique assets? You know, there's a massive opportunity with signage. There's a massive opportunity with other things. You know, what could they be? Is, are they wind vanes? Are they are they looking glasses? What what could they be that's unique to Lowestoft's story? And I think that certainly when I think about it, I get very excited, but I think it's a massive opportunity in terms, but then also how can lower staff have a bin that nobody else has? How can it have a bench that nobody else have? You know, do you have special sleeping benches because you're waiting for the sun to come up? You know, there's a, there's a, your imagination can go crazy to what can happen in terms of selling and celebrating your story. I'm looking forward to the lowest off bin now. You've got me going. Um, so somebody's asked about whether um, this is all free. Yes, it is. So the imagery is free uh, because the whole idea is to encourage you to use it. The visual language is free because we, we desperately want you to use it. So there you go. Can't be bad when it's free. Um, and another one for you, Peter. How... Um, how will the, the sort of the design stay fresh as I think, it develops? I think the design, you know, again, again, the, as, as you saw with the example of South Downs National Park, um, your story is a story that will hold for a long time. But if your sto but your story can change, and um, you know, you can have something that happens tomorrow that that that, that slightly bends your story a little bit, and in that case, that should affect your expression. But I think the advantage of having a visual language as opposed to a logo is it continuously can change. You can refresh with new colors, with new elements as the story progresses. But first and foremost, you have to gain a familiarity with it, you know, and it'll take a few years before that familiarity embeds in, you know, and then at that point, as things metamorphosize, whether they be as simple as color, then you will understand because you will be part of that that vocabulary, and then it will make sense to you why it's evolved and what it's trying to illustrate. And one of the things, Karen, um, is there are clearly organisations around Lower Stoft already that exist. Um, are you encouraging them to use this? Do you want them to be telling this story and using the brand? Yes, definitely. And um, Annie um, from the Suffolk Coast um, Destination Management Organisation is on this call at the moment and we've been speaking about how we can um, use this branding um, for the Suffolk Coast um, uh, website and marketing and promotions to, to promote um, Lowest Off better within the work that they do, which is about promoting the Suffolk Coast as a whole. Um, you know, obviously, you know, there's, a, there's, there's many beautiful places along the Suffolk Coast and um, it's about shouting about the individual places, but also about shouting about them as a, the, 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 all of those places as a, as a place, a destination to visit for tourists, you know, not in competition with, but alongside those places. Um, so it's very much about working with those organisations who who are in the tourism sector to uh, attract visitors that, you know, they're, they're definitely key. Um, and as I uh, mentioned earlier, um, a lot of our um, organisations that represent the offshore sector or our engineering sectors as well, we're, we're working with all of those organisations to, to encourage them, them to use the brand. And, and as you say, John, also for the councils um, um, ourselves. So obviously we, the council has our own, uh, has its own branding that, that we use as an organisation. But when we're talking about lower stuff to really um, start, um, you know, different finding it within the branding of the place. Brilliant. Okay, and I'm just saying if there's uh, whoops, some more questions um, rolling in. No. So I think we've, um, I'm, I'm conscious of everybody's time on this, um, and we said we would finish in an hour and a half. Um, so I have no more questions from the audience, unless anyone is going to chuck one in at the moment. So um, on that basis, um, can I thank um, Stephen for uh, the introduction and setting the context so well. And at the end of the day, he himself is a great example of this new sort of place leadership that's been brought in. Um, can I thank Peter for um, explaining it, I think, really, really clearly in terms of 
most importantly, showing you what the opportunities are, because obviously nothing has happened yet. Um, but you can see now that this is about doing things differently, not just slapping a load of logos all over everywhere. And can I thank Karen as well for giving all the context uh, and answering some of the difficult questions um, about how it's going to be used and what the potential is. So I think um, hopefully you will go away from this um, excited and enthused about all of this. It's available now. It's free. It's in the public domain. So it, it's all up to you, this really, because I think, as has been said by everybody, uh, this will only work and it will only work for lower stuff if people get behind it. Uh, and everybody needs to get behind it um, because you can't just sit back and expect the council to do it all. You've got to play your part. So hopefully that was um, a useful session. Um, and can I wish you a great rest of day? Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, John.